Sorry about my confusion. You know, it's older people kind of lose control, you know, forget <laughs> where we are. Geez, I don't know. I'm not there yet. <laughs> and, uh, generation. Anyway, uh, sorry. Thought it was uh, 8.30. Um, so uh, I will open the meeting. Um, do we need roll call? I'm not sure who's on tonight, Jeff. Jeff. <clears throat> Jeff is on. Jeff, can we have? Sorry, let me unmute myself. Okay, Mayor Morandi. Here. Trustee Early. Yes. Trustee Foley. Here. Trustee Murphy. Here. And Trustee Woods. Here. Phillips Woods. Also here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have to shoot down to get to the uh, agenda for tonight. Um, Marie, could you uh, start the uh, with the uh, public hearing portion of this to like? Sure. Um, so, uh, uh, Fran, so I make a motion to enter into a public hearing for the franchise agreement with Cablevision of Wappingers Falls. I'll second the motion. Thank you, Fran. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Fran, do you want to give us uh, the highlights of the franchise agreement? Um, I will probably stumble. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to pass some of this off to Jeff, but basically um, <clears throat> this is a renewal of a franchise agreement that we've had with Cablevision or with actually with Altis, who used to be Cablevision. Um, and the original agreement was Done. The last agreement was done in 2009, I believe. It's usually about a 10 year, but it spreads over a little bit longer. Uh, <clears throat> the highlights of it is, is um, there's a number of things um, the village gets um, for the, for the um, because we allow Walties to deal in the village, they pay us a franchise fee, which is a percentage of the gross um, uh, income they get from village residents. Uh, and I believe it's paid quarterly. Is that correct, Michelle? <clears throat> yes, okay. It's paid, paid to the village quarterly. In addition, um, LTS gives the village buildings as well as the schools in the village and the library in the, in the village, um, free cable uh, service for, I believe, one of the buildings in one, one school building and one uh, library building. <clears throat> um, other than that, uh, this is, a, a, I believe, a new 10-year agreement. And um, we posted this, so we have a red line version up online. Uh, and at this point, uh, Jeff, what am I? What am I missing? I know it's, it's sort of a, a lot of pages that doesn't say doesn't say it's a lot of legal stuff. And John could correct me, but basically, ninety nine percent is controlled by the New York New York State Public Service Commission. So what's in there has to be in there. Different from the agreement this year is that um, Maltese has given us a technology grant which we have not had in the past in the past and that was i believe thirty five hundred dollars um in addition they have up upgraded the speed of the internet in village hall from um basically went from a track to cd player so we we're grateful for that and uh, and i i've I noticed the difference immediately i think there are, those are the main differences and uh john is on here from Altice, and he could address these also, if uh, in case I missed anything. No, I think you gonna, both. Sorry, go ahead. I'm just going to jump in with one more thing. Um, the agreement that we have with Altice in no way uh, prevents any other company from coming in and dealing in the village. Um, the agreement basically says if another company wishes to offer services in the village, they have to give us an agreement similar to what Altice is giving us if they give us less and Altice has the right to lower um, what they're giving us in terms of the contract we currently have. So um, it's not a case that, well, we have Altice and we can't get Verizon or Fios or anything else. Uh, anybody's welcome to come in. Uh, they just have to match um, the franchise agreement that we have with Altice. I think that's correct. Is that right, John? That's right. You have it right. So you had, I was just about to say it's a non-exclusive agreement. So you just covered that. Um, everything else is exactly how you positioned it. We, we, once we, and if we get to a, a board of vote, then the PSC, we had then give the documents to the PSC, they review it and they bless it. As Jeff said, this is um, something they have oversight on. A lot of the legalese are based on federal and state law, um, mainly guarded by the FCC and also the Public Service Commission. 
Um, so all the other elements you mentioned are, are exactly right. Dave, do you want to leave the public hearing open until later in the meeting? Um, I don't know. Is there anyone on now? It's one of those things. I'm not sure how many people will be uh, interested in. I guess we can. We we usually keep it open, so uh, we'll keep it open uh, for a bit and uh, continue on with our meeting. Is there anyone? Does anyone Jeff else have a question? question? Anyone else on the board have questions for John or or Jeff about this agreement? No. Okay, so we will move ahead. We'll have to skip over number four for now, since this is going on. Uh, financial update, uh, Michelle. I... Um, hello. Um, hello. This is this the first week of the new fiscal year? Um, there's not much going on. Um, so the old fiscal year ended on May 31st, um, but the same thing, it's only been a week. Um, and at the year end, there's a lot of bills that still come in for the next few weeks. There's adjusting entries that need to be done. Um, I, there's, it wouldn't be fair to present financials because they, they change every day for the next couple of weeks. So I can have a draft financial of the May 31st, you know, for next month's monthly meeting. Um, and then at that time, I'll also be filing them with the state, which it has to be done by July 31st. And then the auditors come in and they audit and then they make few minor changes um, and then we send that back up to the state. I haven't um, scheduled the auditors yet, um, but it's usually late summer, early fall that they come in for three days um, and then they do their presentation sometime, you know, before the end of the year. Um, does anybody have any questions about last year's fiscal year or the start of new fiscal year, how any of it works or anything like that? Okay. Um, so then the only other thing that, you know, to really mention uh, the tax bills, they all went out. They've started to come in. Um, tax rate, as we planned, did not change essentially by change by 0 0.003. Um, so less than a penny. Um, and it actually decreased. Um, so I've, as I've heard, somebody's tax bill went down 16 cents, which I call that flat. And that's where we wanted to be. Um, even with, you know, a little bit of the increase we made it with the changes in tax assessments, um, it stayed flat. So right where we want to be. Um, and we'll see how everything comes in through June 30th without penalty. But usually we collect it a good 90 to 95 percent of the taxes, you know, in June. And then... The, I guess the PTO, which is in the handbook, um, that's all been taken care of with all the full-time employees. They've decided if they want to, you know, defer some time, cash out, and that was all taken care of with the payroll that was processed yesterday. Um, so really not much going on. Um, Kathleen and Larry did bring up, which it's not on my report earlier today, a, a grant maybe for the police department. Um, so that's just something that, you know, we have to look into and uh, I'll work with Kathleen and Larry on that. Um, but it looks like you know, it's from the federal government, and then there might be a smaller s section of that grant specifically for smaller agencies. Um, so we'll look into that as well when that gets released later in June. Great. Anything for Michelle? Nice, nice work, Michelle. Good. Thank you, Michelle. As always, thank you, Michelle. Uh, let's see. We have. Uh, Police report. I saw Larry on before. How are you doing, Larry? I'm good. Good evening, everybody. Hopefully, I'm off mute, correct? You're off mute. Good. Okay. Uh, for the month of May 2021, we had 47 calls for service for a total number for the year 275. We had no persons arrested. We had two for the year. Uh, for the moving violations, we had 13 moving violations. Uh, we had 53 parking summonses issued. That gave us a total of 66 for the month and for the year 231. Um, Nico, our parking enforcement uh, person, started uh, two weeks ago. He was off for uh, Memorial Day due to the weather. So I would expect the summonses to go up as the weekends get busier and busier and as long as the weather stays uh, sunny and nice. Um, other than that, I had a few couple of things I just wanted to touch on. 
Uh, first of all, I was going to bring up, Michelle already brought it up, uh, possible grant monies going in, in the future for body cameras for the officers. I know that was heavy, uh, not heavy, but it was one of the top things on the survey that came back. But I was looking to try to do that anyway, because most of the police departments are going towards body cam cameras, uh, you know, in the next, probably next year or so. Uh, I know the state is looking to uh, have all of us do that. It might, wasn't in the police policy, but it was a suggestion. Um, there was um, one thing I do want to bring up. Uh, I've noticed uh, talking to other municipalities, the auto thefts and burglaries have inched up in Dutchess County and also in Westchester, Westchester County. Uh, it was something that kind of hits in waves with, with uh, the area. They come in, if you leave your car open and you have your car keys in the car, they're taking your car. If you leave the front door open, they're walking in your front door. Um, so my advice to everybody in the village, I know we like to be friendly and open. Make sure your doors are locked. If you have alarms as ADT or the ring doorbell or whatever, make sure they're uh, working and they're, you know, they're functioning correctly. Uh, I'd like to get ahead of it before anything happens to us. Uh, again, it seems to go on a wave. They come in on like a late night, one night, they'll hit whatever they can hit and see whatever doors are open to get what they can get. So far, from my understanding, it, it's not been anything, any violence. It's more just a car door being open and taking anything that's in there. Um, we are still working and moving along with the Lexapol, with uh, Officer D'Amato from PBA, myself and uh, Trustee Foley. And that uh, seems to be, you know, we're hitting as many chapters as we can. A couple of them are a little sticky with, uh, you know, longer chapters and shorter ones. So we'll be getting those out to you um, as soon as we can. Uh, and another program that I don't, I, didn't, I haven't talked about in the past because it was in the beginning stages, uh, Mike Piazza, who runs the health uh the health for the county, mental health, has started a trying to start a program up for all of Putnam County. So officers will have another tool when we respond to mental health kit issues, not just uh, calls for assistance in, you know, uh, car breaking or, you know, dog barking or whatever. Um, it's more of a health, health issue that we've been dealing with. They're all over the county and all over the state and actually the country. The mental health calls have been uh, uh, have been skyrocketing, uh, probably due to many, many things. COVID being one of them, being locked up in your house for God knows how long, people that are uh, self-medicating. Um, and you, you've seen it, it's been all over the news when you show up. Uh, so anyway, Mike Piazza is working on that with all of the police departments in the county. He has gone on a couple of uh, Zoom meetings with other municipalities and um and uh, health, uh, mental health uh, programs. So what we're trying to do is get some monies together to have uh, something, it, it, down in Low West, so they actually have a mental health person that drives around with some of the officers on the weekends when it gets very, when there's a heavy, heavy load of calls for mental health issues. What we're trying to do is maybe carry a laptop or, or in another sense, maybe um, give it to like the PVAC. So if they get called to the scene, we're gonna get called to the scene. If they deem it a mental health issue, you might be able to get a uh, professional on a, lap, uh, on a laptop or the iPad so some, they can talk to somebody instead of a police officer. Because it seems that when we show up, it kind of, some people get a little more agitated than others. So we're working on that. That's, that's gonna, that's kind of probably a work in progress. Don't know how long that's gonna, that's gonna take. But I just wanted to let the people know who are on the meeting that this is the stuff that goes on behind the scenes that I don't speak about often because I want to wait till I get something solid on it. Um, and that's really all I about have. I'm probably going to request from the village board um, and the mayor to look at two new hirees uh, coming up in the next two weeks. We are, we are still short and we're still down. Uh, a lot of guys going on a vacation in July and August. So we'll, we'll be struggle, not struggling, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get the schedule filled, but it's just getting a little more harder with less officers. Right now we have 10. Um, I know about a year, a year and a half ago, we were up to almost 15. That's it for me. Thanks, Larry. The, uh, the work of uh, Officer Piazza's done sound, sounds like a good, a, a good <laughs> deal. Hopefully that goes, it works. Sounds like something needed. Uh, Okay, anything from the board, Larry? Nope, doing good, thank you. 
Okay, uh, next up is uh, Rec Commission. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Hello, Dan. Good, good. Hope everybody's doing well. I just saw a couple of typos on my report, so you'll have to excuse me. Um, first, I've listed the approved events, um, except the Boy Scout ceremony this Sunday is actually from two to five at Mayor's Park, not whatever name I put down there. <laughs> um, we have a new application for use of the bandstand for wedding um, that needs to um, be approved. Um, we seem to get a lot of requests. Um, I, I got another one the other day, um, but I don't think that one's gonna go forward. Um, the bandstand repair and painting has been completed thanks to the sheriff's um, department and the highway department doing the prep work. So that looks really nice. Um, it's nice to have it looking so nice. We're still working on the flagpole, but I'm gonna keep it on there for a while and hopefully um, the county will be able to assist us with that. Um, the, tr the willow trees at Mayors Park, two of them have been trimmed. They look really nice. I hope that's gonna do two things. Um, one, make it look nicer, and the other one is um, mitigate all of the falling uh, branches that happen and then cause a real problem when it's time for mowing. Uh, the um, commission member, um, Trevor, uh, Trevor has been working with the Phillipstown Recreation Commission about a softball tournament. Um, we'll work, we're going forward, talking with them about a fun softball tournament, the first, the second two weekends in September at Mayor's Park. Um, I think this is hopefully to uh, pique people's interest and maybe next summer have an adult softball league again um, with the two groups. Uh, a new commission member, I think it's further on the agenda. I was hoping we might be able to move it up. Um, but Jeff Amato Jr. has expressed an interest in the Recreation Commission, um, and we feel he'd be a great addition to the group. Um, so I know that comes later, but I don't know if we can move it up so I don't have to stay on the whole time. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, gee, <laughs> you love us. <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> if I want to do that, I'd run for trustee and that's not going to happen. <laughs> so um, pending events, um, we still have the, um, um, food and, the food and wine festival that was at the last agenda. And I have not heard yet from um, the coordinator as far as doing the site walkthrough, but I know she has other things to get back to you about the parking, the transportation and the COVID plans. So that's pretty much everything that we've done. I mean. Okay. Uh, well, one thing, uh, I think, uh, you know, we can give a shout out to, uh, I did our last meeting to uh, Michelle uh, Patterson from the Highlands, uh, I believe Highlands Garden Club, is that right? That does the work around the, is it the Cold Spring or Highlands Garden Club? They do the uh, flowers and. Well, yeah, they, they did around the bandstand. Right. I did the flowers and the um, buckets. Right. And well, Michelle convinced my husband to go down there and water the plants. So now we have an, an extended member of the flower group who goes down and waters them. That's great. <laughs> and well, and it, 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 it is the Highlands Garden Club. Okay. Yeah. They do a really, a really nice job, especially Michelle puts a ton of energy into it. He so does, yeah. While you're mentioning everything, it looks great. Um, you should definitely uh, include that in it because they do a nice job and it really does. They do. Yeah. yeah. Thank you also. And your husband. Yeah. We and also. Go ahead. go ahead. I was going to move if you have something else and then I'll move up the uh, appointment of Jeff Motto Jr. Yep. That's it. I just everybody's. It's nice. Everybody's working together. You know, the highway department, the flower, the, the you know, the garden group, um, the tree committee. You know, with everybody working together, it makes everything look better. Yeah. You know, so the top park looks good. So. <clears throat> okay. Unless uh, someone has objections, I would like to move number fourteen up to now for the uh, approval of Jeff Amato Jr. to the Rec Commission. Is no everyone okay with that? Yeah. Yep. Yes. 
So on the recommendation of the Rec Commission, I will make a motion to approve uh, Jeff Amato Jr. as a new member of the Rec Commission. Second. Any further discussion? No. The all in favor? Have, oh. well, go ahead. Oh, I'm glad you finished. <laughs> oh, go ahead. No, I need to talk about our meeting dates after you oh, approve. Okay. Uh, okay, back to Jeff Amato. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, welcome, Jeff. Thank you for welcome, volunteering. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, the issue we now have is that we have two members of the commission that are on the fire department, and we meet on Tuesdays. And that's also a day of the week that the fire department meets. So at our next meeting, we're gonna look at the schedule and see if we should move our meeting to another day. Um, okay. Cause it's hard to be two places at the same time. Yes, it is. I know all the trustees do that all the time, but the rest of us, <laughs> work, we just can't do yeah, no. it. Not yeah. well. <laughs> well, thank when, you. When you're ready, come to the board with your change of dates and we'll, we'll take care of it. Great. Okay. Thanks thank you for being. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Have you a good too. night. Thank good you. Night. Okay, next uh, planning board. Matt on. Yeah, I'm here, but the planning board has no business in front of us right now. Okay. Then we go to zoning board. Is Eric there? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hi, everybody. Hi, Eric. Um, I'm doing well. Good. We had two meetings in May. May 6th, um, we had a public hearing about 17 Parsonage Street. This was a, a request for two area variances allowing an addition to the front of a house. Two neighbors spoke in support while one written comment was opposed. The hearing was held open until the next meeting pending the submission of more information from the applicants and site visits by board members. The next meeting was May 20th, and we continued the hearing on 17 Parsonage. Um, we received another public comment in favor of the application. The board closed the hearing and voted to, re to grant the requested variances, although the members felt that the decision was a tough one. And uh, then we ha held a workshop for 12 Benedict Road an application for an area variance to allow an addition that would slightly encroach on the front yard setback. We scheduled a public hearing on this application for the following meeting. And that, that was it. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Eric. You're welcome. Uh, next, we have the town of Phillipstown. It's not in your packet, but Bobby sent last minute. So Bob, are you there? He's trying to connect. He should be with us momentarily. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, he's on. Do uh, you want to go to HDRB? We have a someone from HDRB on with us tonight? It does not look like it. Okay, I will read it then. The monthly report of the Village Board from the Historic District Review from submitted by Sean Conway. Uh, in May, current applications in May, we met two times. We approved an application for new windows and an entry door on 11 Parrot Street. We approved a new shop sign at 109 Main Street. Met with the... <laughs> Excuse me. We met with the owner of 68 Main Street regarding replacement windows around the entire property. In our discussion, it was determined that while the windows would would appropriate and allowable on these would be, I guess, appropriate and allowable on the side of the rear facades, com compromise of latter additions to the historic volume, we requested that the homeowner make a greater attempt at restoring the windows on the primary facade facing Main Street to their original condition. Uh, we will continue that conversation in June. Lastly, we continued our discussion with Trustee Woods regarding the fence at 8 Furnish Street. Uh, for our monthly meeting on June 9th, we received an application from 17 Marion Avenue regarding a new uh, garage and adjustments to previously approved fence. Board work 
<coughs> projects and notes, Putnam County GIS office has uh, completed all of our requested updates to the map. We will schedule a workshop with the trustees to present the changes after our June monthly meeting. Thank you, Sean. Um, did Bob make it on? Yes. Hey, Davey, I'm here. I'm sorry. Yep, I'm here. Not a problem. Can you hear me? How are you? Yep. Thanks. Okay. You ready for my report? We certainly are. Okay. Very good. Uh, as you know, the town hall renovations working on a punch list still. Uh, we were back in there as a, for our second meeting for the last two months. Um, unfortunately, not many people showed up at our last board meeting, but it was in person. Uh, this is a little strange thing, but we did receive a $10,000 credit back from uh, one of our um, electrical contractors. Uh, very unusual. We'll, we'll accept the $10,000 back. So it's, uh, we appreciate that for him being very honest and, and making the effort to give us the money back. Uh, we accepted a uh, retirement from Karen Veers Adamo from Rec Department. Uh, she worked there for 29 years. Uh, I'd like to thank her for her many years of dedication to the in services for uh, the, to the town of Phillipstown. She'll be greatly missed. You know, she's been down there a long time. With every answer call down there, she's the person who answers the phone. Uh, we passed a few resolutions regarding the highway garage, a negative declaration under seeker, town exemption for local zoning and advertising to demo uh, the existing garage. Originally, we were gonna demo the, the existing garage ourselves, but uh, the crew is pretty busy and it, depending on how the bids come in, we'll determine if we're gonna do it ourselves or not, but we'd like to try to get it out, out for bid so someone else can work on that way. Also, we had opening bids today for a new garage. I really don't know the outcome as a particular time because I couldn't make that meeting this afternoon. Um, but from what I understand, there are, uh, they were a little bit over our budget, but we're going to figure out how we're going to move forward with that. Uh, again, we didn't award it to anybody at this particular time, but we did get all the uh, <clears throat> bids back in. We were also going to be hiring a construction management project manager for this. For this, we we tried the town hall without that, and to be quite honest, it was uh, a lot of work that fell on the town board, and also too we felt that. Uh, we have a project manager that can manage it better and also ho hopefully probably keep some of the costs down is what we're gonna do uh, with that. Uh, we passed the resolution and started pollinating and guarding at the town hall. Um, we're gonna start slow. We did get a quote to do the whole front of the town hall, but it was just out of our budget. So we're gonna start a very small section and probably hope we grow that over at the, at the year, over the years as they come. Uh, we installed new gravel around Quarry Pond up there. We had a few requests last month about the gravel that we had around there was getting kind of old and not, and it was kind of dilapidated. So uh, we put new gravel and so if everyone takes a walk up there around with the, the new, um, the, <clears throat> the pond, you'll see new gravel. So it looks pretty good. As I've been saying over the last several months, the Garrison Golf Course and Shea Series Festival is moving forward with the planning board. Uh, it's gonna be a many, many months before we come to a resolution for this. Also the Desmond Fish Library was going to install a solar ribbon in a discovery trail. Uh, they're moving forward with the discovery trail, but they did eliminate the solar panels and most likely that will be approved next month. The zoning, most of the boards are meeting in public uh, in, the, in the town hall or new space, but the planning board decided they'd rather be, meet via Zoom through June. Uh, the coronavirus update, uh, we had a meeting down there last week with Sean Patrick Maloney and uh, many people of the uh, county they indicated at the end of this month, they will no longer be doing the pods down there. And uh, the drug world representative was there as well. He's saying later this month, anybody with the, you know, can walk into the drug world later this month with no appointment and get the vaccine of their choice. They're gonna have the, so if someone wants the Moderna, they can get that, the Pfizer, they can get that. And any other, uh, J&J, &J, they can get that as well, so. That's a good thing. That means things are starting to come back as everyone indicated. We're hoping to get the state back to 75% vaccinated. I guess when that comes, uh, according to Governor Como, things should be open up full, at full speed. Um, we're scheduling a workshop with the Nelsonville board and, and, and Cold Spring board. Um, have you guys seen that email? Did you guys, were you able to make one of those two dates? It's uh, we're be discussing it later on in our, uh... Okay. okay, whatever it is, we'll you know, hopefully uh, discuss the new, uh, discuss the marijuana legislation. 
And we're still looking for someone who's interested in joining the planning uh, board of assessment review. Thank you for your time. Hey, Bob. Yes. It's Larry Burke. Um, I know you're going through a lot of, uh, of, of new quirks with the new building. We've been getting a couple of false alarms up there. Uh, we had a, a, a panic alarm that went off when I responded. There's been a elevator alarm that's gone off and a couple of hang up on 911s. Um, so when you're, whoever is still doing your punch list up there, if they can look into some of that, um, that'd be greatly appreciated. Okay, Larry. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, I did understand we did get a call one day last week from the alarm. So uh, definitely thanks for bringing it up to my attention. I only knew about the one. So uh, thanks for bringing it to my attention. I'll try to stop by there tomorrow and talk to the group. Thank you. Bob, since uh, you just got those bids and I was wondering how the, uh, since uh, construction materials are up about 200 to 300%, <laughs> uh, I, I would imagine it's pretty hard to get a bid out or get people a bid on stuff. Well, from what, like I said, I wasn't there for the bid opening. From what I understand, Dave, we got quite a few bids. Uh, unfortunately, when we did the town hall, we only got like two or three. From what I understand, we got a bunch. We got all like almost 10 bidders on this project. Um, and I don't know the final number, so I hate to say what, what the numbers were, but I heard they range from three million all the way up to $6 million. Uh, but again, don't quote me for that. That's not a, you know, that's what I was told from a quick conversation I had with somebody else on the town board later this, late this afternoon. Um, yeah, I'm sure, like you said, the price of materials is way up. Uh, so exactly, um, you know, <laughs> no one anticipated that. Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> might, <laughs> might be, uh, time. Well, I know, but yeah, I, I know. But right now we're kind of a predicament. I mean, we're starting yeah. to. <laughs> Started dismantling some pieces of that building, and we were rented two spaces down in Nelsonville. Uh, so at this particular time, I think we got to move forward. But hey, if it's completely out of budget, if we can't do it, then I think we'll have to come up with another solution. Right. Okay. Well, good luck with that. I, I, Thank I, you. I was curious every time I go in Home Depot and see the uh, plywoods up to like over eighty dollars a sheet for uh, half an inch. Wow. I would. Uh, how nuts. people would even, or people that had bids, how they're working with those, and and I don't know, it's a tough tough year to be building. I think. <laughs> I, I I agree, and I heard I heard steel's just as bad. You know, the steel I heard is like crazy. Yeah. And hard to get stuff. And hard to get. Yes, exactly right. All right. Well, thanks, Bob. All right, Dave. And everybody uh, else. Take care, Bob. Thank you. Okay, fire company. Okay, so there were 13 calls for May, two EMS assists, five activated fire alarms, one possible propane leak, one mutual aid to garrison fire, one mountain rescue on breakneck, um, and the company was able to use its new Polaris Ranger for that. Um, and with the new Ranger, they have the capacity to put the person who is hurt on a vehicle and drive them down rather than carrying them down. So that's a, a, a large improvement from where they were last summer. Um, one carbon monoxide alarm and two elevator rescues at Metro North. Um, I passed on to Mayor Morandi that uh, Chief Merrigan um, would like to speak with someone at Metro North regarding the elevator. Um, this is the new elevator. They've had two alarms. They said they sort of come in fits and starts and the problem seems quickly resolved when they, there's an exterior button they press and it resolves, but they still take the elevator out of service and so that Metro North is aware and um, is sure to follow up. But he wonders if it isn't a simple electrical problem because it's not, it doesn't seem to be happening in response to outages um, as it was before. So I know that you're in talks, um, Mayor Randy, with Metro North frequently. I don't know if you have a, a contact with that sort of issue and would like to pass that on to Chief Merrigan. I'll, I'll follow up tomorrow. It's on my list. Okay, I'll, I'll, cool. I'll, I'll contact. Um, we're still on automatic mutual aid with North Highlands. So thank you to North Highlands from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, unfortunately, the ice cream fundraiser over Memorial Day was a bust, as was everything in the rain. Um, and I think that, um, Mayor Miranda, you had meetings with Padala on the, um, the, the boiler that's moving forward too. Uh, yeah, it was actually not with Pedal, it was someone else on HVAC, but I have to reach out to uh, 
uh, to Jimmy Padel tomorrow about the uh, heater, the hot water heater. Hot water so, heater, right? Do that, and I also talked to a painter about painting the side of the building that's facing the old homestead building, and. The old homestead building, I met with Matt Steltz and uh, we went and looked at it. And maybe one of the causes of the so-called mold was uh, this awning that was pretty much drained right into the building. And yeah, I asked them if they would take it down and they did. Oh, so right on. they removed that. So thank you to them. And uh, so now I think the next step is to seal that wall. So let's try to get a, a quote on that and move that forward. Excellent. That's all I have for them. Okay, thank you. Uh, next tree advisory. Is Jen on or not? She is not. Okay, uh, tree advisory. Uh, board did not hold a regular meeting in May. Our next meeting will be June 23rd at 7 p.m. Updates for the month of May included Main Street trees. The highway department completed the work of widening one empty tree pit in front of 101 Main Street in preparation for a future tree planting. Thank you to Mr. Downey and crew for their help. Uh, TAB volunteers are using a loaned 100 gallon watering bladder to periodically water new planted trees throughout the village during the unseasonable seasonable heat wave this spring. <laughs> contact work uh, or contract work. Two mature willows in Mayor's Park uh, with significant deadwood uh, have been professionally pruned and their canopy reduced to improve their structural, their structure and reduce the risk of breakage and to extend their life. Uh, thank you to Ruth Ann and members of the Rec Commission for collaborating and finding funds for this needed work. The arborist and a crew did a great job preserving these trees. And finally, a declining maple near 65 Chestnut Street, which was concerning adjacent residents, was evaluated by an arborist and was recommended for immediate removal due to the stage of its decline and visible root rot. The removal work was completed before the end of May. Uh, respectfully, Jennifer Zwart. Thank you. Um, is the final is the Chamber of Commerce. Good evening, everyone. Uh, can you hear me okay? Sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so the chamber held our monthly virtual meeting in May with a presentation on the New York Health Act with guest speaker Dick Godfrey, chair of the Assembly Committee on Health, who provided a legislative update and answered questions. The meeting was attended by Trustee Foley, as well as the director of Putnam Tourism, Tracy Walsh, um, and the director of Putnam EDC, Kathleen Abels, were present at the meeting. Jeff Michelson, the chamber's advocacy chair, uh, estimated that the Cold Spring Village alone would save approximately 300,000 per year in employee health insurance expenses um, should the New York Health Act get passed. The bill has majority support in both New York Assembly and New York S Senate and has about another week to come to the floor for a vote before the session is closed for the year. Um, any municipalities, businesses, organizations, or individuals who would like to encourage putting the bill to vote this week may add their names to the endorsement at uh, nyhcampaign.org slash endorse. Our June meeting, um, will be our annual chamber awards on Tuesday, June 15th. Uh, from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30. This annual celebration is a chance to thank some of the businesses, organizations, and leaders who helped to shape, improve, and provide Phillipstown residents with services that support a high quality of life. This year's scholarship winner will be also announced at that meeting. Officials are invited to join the meeting and the meeting will be open to the public. Guests can RSVP on the Chamber of Commerce's homepage at coldspringnychamber.com. Um, here's an update from the Visitor Center. Uh, the Visitor Center information booth is open this opened up this past week, um, as well as um, the Monday of the Memorial Day weekend. Um, we had some delays Saturday and Sunday of Memorial Day weekend were kind of rained out, so we did not open until Monday. Um, but the bathrooms were cleaned and restocked on Saturday, and um, the volunteers were there on Monday. 
Wi-Fi was installed um, with a box in the utility room of the visitor center this past Friday on June 4th. Um, and the volunteers are scheduled to open the booth um, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays going forward, um, weather provided. Uh, there are a couple new businesses that opened on Main Street this past week. We'd like to welcome Wild at 135 Main Street, a new houseplant shop and a new chamber member, and Studio Testego, a ceramic art dealer at 49 Main Street. We wish both businesses good luck and uh, in their business launches, and everyone should check them out if you haven't yet. Um, New York State COVID-19 pande pandemic small business recovery grant program is rolling out a plan to get small businesses who suffered financially during the pandemic back on their feet. Um, the program is being administered by the Empire State Development Court um, and to qualify small for small and macro businesses must be able to show gross receipts between 25,000 and 500 grand in 2020 or 2019 and demonstrate at least a 25% loss in gross receipts in a year to year revenue comparison um, as of 12 31 2020 to the same period in 2019. Um, for profit independent arts and cultural organizations are also eligible, but there are conditions about having received um, other re relief funds. So they have to read the instructions for applying carefully. Grant amounts of about 5,000 to 50,000, depending on the size of the business, um, are available. And the application's first date to file is June 10th, 2021, tentatively. Um, people can learn more about this program at esd.ny.gov. Um, and that's it for my report tonight. Thank you. Um, before we go into our next section, do you, is everyone okay about going back to the resolution? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we'll go back to number four with the resolution. Uh, I'll make a motion. Uh, well, I can't. Will somebody else make the motion? Yes. I make a motion to approve uh, the authorization to renew a cable franchise agreement with Cable Vision of Wappingers Falls to operate a cable system in the village of Cold Spring. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Oh, oh, Aye. I think we, uh, I, we might have jumped out of, out of water here. We never did close the public hearing. Is that right? Correct. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Okay. Is there we anybody should, uh, on? I'm sorry, what's that? Is there anyone on? Anyone on who wanted to speak? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't see anyone. Yeah, right. no one is raising their hands. Uh, if not, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing on the franchise agreement with Cablevision. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, and then we'll redo the resolution, Marie, okay. if you would. Thank yep. you. Sorry. So I make a motion to approve resolution number 13-2021, authorizing the Village of Cold Spring to renew a cable franchise agreement with Cablevision of Wappinger's Fault, Inc. to operate a cable system in the Village of Cold Spring. I will second. Okay. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. It's roll call vote. vote. Oh, sorry. <laughs> one, two. Okay. Trustee Early? Yes. Trustee Foley? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Phillips Woods? Yes. And Mayor Morandi? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Couldn't have mangled that anymore. Yeah. John, I'll get you the resolution. Um, I'll get I'll get you the resolution. I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Okay, great. I'll talk about the the details on how you what you need. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you to the board. Thank you, thank John. You, John. Good John. Night. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, next report: water and wastewater. Is Matt with us. Good evening. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Matt. How are you? Hey, ah, not bad. Hiding in my basement. Sorry, the no video. Uh, so, yeah, this month, uh, the water usage increased slightly to 1.64%. The reservoirs are a little bit lower than they were at this time last year, uh, but still in very good standing. 
the bacteriological test, we had a coliform present, but absent for E. coli at the 19th of May. Uh, all follow-up samples from the repeat sample site and everything else came back in good standing. Uh, just got the results back for the second set of the PFOA, PFOS, dioxane, and they came back in good standing as well. So that was good. I've uh, been working with West Tech to revise the refurbishment quote to get the filters uh, refurbished. Uh, basically just trying to see what absolutely needs to get done, which would be rehabbing of the exterior and interior uh, metal walls uh, and then replacing the media and other miscellaneous upgrades in the future. Uh, we had two water service line replacements in the month of May, uh, one at 14 Paulding uh, that we assisted with Sal Vidala on that as we were waiting for the resident to get back from vacation, but a uh, sinkhole had begun to be surface on the roadway. So it was called in as emergency and got that repaired. Uh, the other one was at 52 Morris, which we had the leak last year. Uh, but yeah, now that the winter months have subsided and the, got the state approval, the Zeller brothers went ahead and replaced that line, installed a new curb box, and the village and water and wastewater and highway department assisted with the road closure and traffic control during the job. Uh, we also had a new water service connection, uh, 65 Paulding by Unicorn Construction. Uh, the dam's emergency action plan is pretty much ready to go. I just need two pieces of information before it gets sent back out uh, to the state of regulatory agencies. Uh, looking for a village trustee or board member to be part of the development crew. Uh, there's a hard copy at the office for review if anybody would like to take a look at it. Uh, the other one is, is if Tectonic would remain as the village's engineer in this or should it be upgraded to the current engineer hired by the village? Uh, on the water side, we have the Badger endpoint upgrade, which definitely does need to get ordered. Uh, the current quote for the pricing that we received earlier in the year uh, expires on June 30th. So I was going to reach out to Michelle and see if we can get that ordered and then proceed with, uh, I think you had made a mention of it last month that we could leave the endpoints in the existing locations and then just swap them out over the time frame until uh, the CDMA technology is discontinued and then everyone should be up to code and still reading and registering data accordingly. I uh, have no updates on the Catskill DEP project since uh, looking for the backup water suppliers. Moving on to the wastewater side of things, not really I, that much. Yes. Matt, can I interrupt? I volunteer. Sure. I volunteer for the EAP. Okay, good. I'll put that in there and then I can uh, get that over to Jeff and maybe we can compress it down to a better manageable electronic file for better updating annually. Okay. Um, on the tectonics, um, have they been doing a good job for us? Uh, I haven't had any relations with them since uh, starting with the village, but it looks like they've been the original supplier of the EAP. I guess they did it inaugurally, and then it's been uh, updated by the village periodically throughout then. Uh, so I haven't had any relations with them. I just didn't feel comfortable putting them in there if we were no longer utilizing them. Dave, I recommend we stay with them. Well, either that or Matt had, we have talked a bit about engineers and the need for one and our dissatisfaction with who we have now. Um, so Matt, would you, is there a recommendation you'd made that you can work with on this? Uh, for engineering for dam work? Not really. I haven't had too much uh, previous experience with that. So, I mean, I can definitely reach out to the contacts I have and see what their, uh, if, what their expertise is, and then we can go from there. Okay, well, maybe if it's not for this, but I think you should follow, we should follow up for an engineer. I, I think you needed one for for other work. Um, and yeah, there's definitely a couple things. Work. So um, if you have one, maybe make a recommendation for that. If not for the dams, and we'll stick with the tonic. We we have been with them. Okay, so I'll update the EAP accordingly for now, and then uh, start reaching out to them. Okay, sounds good. All right. Also, anything Matt, else? Uh, 
Yep. The, uh, yeah, that water leak at the end of uh, Paulding, uh, Paulding in Maine, or just before yep. Maine. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a valve, and it's going to need to get dug up to either be totally replaced or have the packing done. Uh, it just kind of wasn't in the budget for uh, last year when it happened. But yeah, I was uh, speaking to Bazella Brothers, who did the uh, repair of 52 Paulding, and as well as Pedal, so I'll be reaching out to them as well to see availability and see if we could do it and get that done and rectified. Okay, yeah, we need to do that as soon as we can, so. Right, yep. Okay. Great, thank you. Now, yep. when, you do, when you do packing, do you mean that the, the pipe is repaired and kept in place with support? Uh, the, pack, the packing is just a material that's uh, located in the valve that basically stops the water from leaking outside of the stem coming out of it. It's just kind of like a precautionary measure. So. With the existing age of the valves that are in the system, it's probably just needs to be replaced. But if the packing, uh, repacking of the valve wouldn't work, then yes, the valve would need to be replaced, but it would be uh, in service or done live if possible with uh, just throttling down the valves to have minimal water infiltrating into the hole and uh, job area. Would your preference be to, to replace rather than? Uh, it really, it really, it really all depends on the condition of it when we expose it. But you know, it's digging it first and then seeing what we're left with and what, uh, yeah, what we actually salvage or if it does need to be replaced. So yeah, I wouldn't know until we got, actually got down to it. Open. Uh, okay, moving on to wastewater. Uh, Biological demand and the TSS for the uh, effluent leaving the plant was in really good shape. Uh, we had 16,000 gallons of sludge hauled off site in the month of May. Uh, the E2 I and I inspections are to be rescheduled. Uh, I haven't heard any updates from Nelsonville on the private wastewater line on Pearl Street. Uh, the blower generator building, I've been playing phone tag with SpectraServe, who is the original uh, installer of the manufactured building. Still looking at other uh, contractors to finish up that wall. Uh, the portable or potable, sorry, borderline leak that's on the grounds there. We were going to try that and do that in house with the help of highway department, but uh, the backhoe is still down for repairs, so that might look to get farmed out as well. And that's about it. It looks like our beaver friends are, are doing quite a job up there. Uh, actually, that's uh, pretty much been the same. It has actually hasn't been too bad with uh, new wood showing up there. Uh, it's basically just smaller twigs and stuff that have been uh, needed to get uh, clear. But other than that, it uh, hasn't really grown significantly in the past like month or two. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Yep. Thanks, Matt. No problem. Uh, let's see. Uh, building department. Charlotte's not here. Charlotte's not here. Not unusual. Okay, I will read her quickly. Um, activity, new building permits, 13. Building permits issued, 14. COs issued, 2. Record searches completed, 2. Complaints received, 2. Inspections completed, 13. Uh, fire inspections, five. Uh, referrals generated, HDRB, three, none for zoning or planning. Uh, fees uh, and permit fees collected, $1,880. Record search fees collected, $150. Fire inspection fees, $100 uh, for a total of $2,130. Okay. Um, highway department, evening bugs. Bugs, you're muted. Okay, I'm, I'm back. How's that? Hi, good. Hi, everyone. Um, for the month of May, we had 48.5 tons of garbage. We had 19.7 tons of recycling. In the month of May, we removed a down tree on Main Street. We had two brush collections. We did have one low level alarm at Lower Main Estuary. We repurposed the police department lockers uh, into a propane storage locker to meet OSHA requirements. 
we swapped a 500 gallon uh, water container for five free brush disposals at waste hook sand mm -hmm. and gravel. Uh, we removed a four by four section of sidewalk to enlarge a tree pit for tab. Uh, we poured 20 foot of curb on Marcus Street and cleaned the debris off of Main Street. For rec department, we repaired broken water lines, installed new supports and tightened all the picnic tables, installed locks on the toilet paper dispensers, and installed a new sink to replace the smashed one at Mayor's Park Pavilion. Uh, all of this at Mayor's Park Pavilion. We also set up barricades for one wedding. Uh, we had the 2011, the 2016, and the 2019 inspected. Uh, we replaced a broken window in the backo. Um, the 03 garbage truck was at Hatfields for an oil leak repair, a repair to the AC system, and they welded on one of the back steps for us. It was also at Riverview Industries for the uh, body supports that were rotting to be removed and new supports were welded into place and a new ignition switch was installed. Hatfield was on site to work on multiple hydraulic leaks on the 97 case backhoe and the Bobcat was at Summit Handling Systems to replace the bent main broom beam and replace the broom bearings. For the month of June, we'll be working on crosswalks paintings catch basin rebuilds and repairs and trimming limbs. Okay. Thank you. Bugs Thank a you question? Folks. Sure. Bugs. Um, I see that we had a smash sink in Mayor's Park. Um, how often does that happen in the course of a season? Um, something breaks. This was something a first skips. for me. Um, it was during a baseball game. I can't remember if it was modified or high school. Um, the kid who broke the sink went to his coach. He was from the other team. He went to his coach and told him, um, I just have to reach out to Tim Walsh up at the school. And from what I understand, the, the team that the kid represented will be paying for it. Okay, I feel a lot better. Thank you. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. Good for him. He should be congratulated, but thank you. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, moving along. Thanks, folks. Thank you, folks. Hi. Next, we have the uh, Village Court, unless I'm missing something. Uh, Village Court, we have fines, forfeited bills, and civil penalties at $1,575. Parking tickets, $2,075. Uh, civil fees, 140 Mandatory state surcharge, 1050 Total of $4,840. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I got to scroll back up here. Um, there is a, a request for the annual justice court audit. Uh, I got to scroll back down. Da -da 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 -da. Pursuant to Uniform Justice Court Action Section 2019-A, it is duty of every justice to present his records and docket at least one a year to the auditing board of the village of town, which shall examine said records of docket or cause same to be examined and enter into minutes of its, of its proceedings, the fact that they have been duly examined. Consistent with Section 2019-A, the Uniform Justice Court Act, I hereby advise that the court's records and dockets are available to be presented for such examination. I look forward to working with you to schedule such examination in an ex expe expeditious manner. It is my understanding that OCS's internal audit service unit will be corresponding with you as well in the uh, very near future in this regard. Subsequent to the audit or examination, please forward to the IAS unit the audit report as well as the board's resolution noting that the record have been duly examined and that the fines therein collected have been turned over to the proper officials of the village as required by law. Such materials may be mailed uh, to, the <coughs> to the following. Uh, and there's a list of who they should be mailed to. Um, so I believe Marie, you were on the audit committee on this. And uh, sorry, Kathleen and I did the audit for oh, okay. 2019 to 2020. So a question to Jeff, the materials were turned over to Kathy and to Jeff. 
So for that audit, I think that the last paragraph has to be um, uh, addressed. Jeff, can you take that on? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so we can move ahead with that then? Well, Words. so we where, completed, where we, we completed the 2019 to 2020. What Tom is asking for is the 2020 to 2021 audit. Okay. Last year, there were, due to COVID, there was no audit, no. so we're doing two this year to catch up. Yeah. Okay. I'd be happy to do that again with you, Marie. You want Marie, to are you that? willing to take that on, or do you have time? Yeah, I can do that. Just let me know what works for yeah, you. And can you uh, make arrangements? Yeah, I'll work it with Tom and Kathy and Kathleen. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, next report, Mayor and Board of Trustees. Uh, Tweeps, you have anything? No, no I do not have anything to report. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Foley. Um, sure, I'll just elaborate a little on what Larry reported um, on Lexipol to just let you know where we are with progress. So there are 159 total chapters, um, 45 of them in our judgment apply directly to Executive Order 203. Um, and we have been through 56 of the overall lot, which includes most of the um, executive order and a few others. Um, I've uploaded this evening uh, 25 chapters for a shared to a, the shared Google Drive. Marie asked to have them in Word documents, and I was finally able to get all the markup to travel with out of Lexipol. So they're there whenever you want to look at them, um, comment on them, think about how you want to how you want to handle them as a board. Um, I have another 20, um, some of which I need to catch up on inputting with. But hopefully, now that we've got with Jeff's report with the new um, internet made Larry, maybe we can actually do the inputting live rather than having to work from paper and then go back later. That would be yeah. great. We can streamline that process a bit. Um, and we determined that 11 of those chapters uh, don't apply to Cold Spring. And so we'll put together a report of the, the ones that we think can be um, excluded from the Cold Spring manual for the, the board to assess. Um, I also wanted to, to recognize um, Officer Burke and Sheriff Langley um, for working diligently with um, the Commissioner of Social Services and Mental Health. Um, Sheriff Langley has been incredibly supportive with our team, um, finding ways to, to innovate where dollars are short and resources are few. Um, the, the, um, the model that, that Larry was talking about in Broome County um, focuses not only on providing um, training to officers so that when they do respond to mental health calls, they have skills and support to de-escalate um, and try to divert folks with mental health issues from the justice system. It also focuses on um, dispatch to make sure that the dispatch callers have um, the training they need to handle the calls as they come in. Um, so I, I, that's that's part of the, the picture in Putnam too, or or as what would what we would let what Putnam County would like to achieve is having dispatchers trained as well as as officers, and I hope that happens before too long. Um, and then the last comment that I, I wanted to, when Jeff um, Michelson made the presentation in, on New York Health with the assembly member who's sponsoring the bill. Um, I forgot to forward it. I didn't think of it until um, Eliza made her report, but there's a calculator um, for municipalities. And as she said, they calculated $300,000 a year saving, savings for the village and a $20 million <laughs> savings for the county. Um, obviously, we, you want to look at how that's calculated. It's, com it's coming out of the, the assembly offices, um, that calculator. And that would be just an absolute game changer. It sounds like it's not going to pass the Senate this week, the state Senate this week, and it's gonna roll into another year. But um, if that were to go into place, it would just be so helpful to all the small municipalities across New York. So maybe maybe next year we support a resolution or pass a resolution and support. So a couple of questions, Kathleen. How would you recommend the board handle um, the um, uh, materials 
on Google from Lexical. You said it's up to the board. How would you recommend the board deal with that? Um, I would say first, just have a look through to familiarize yourselves. Um, most most of the the, the edits are um, are quite minor. There are a couple of chapters that needed to be needed more work to be uh, customized. Um, I would say feel if you feel free to go in and mark up. They're in Word documents now. If you have comments, I would. The, the challenge with downloading from Lexipol is that you don't see any of the notes. Um, for why policies evolved and changed. I would say as you're reading, if you have any questions and you want to see the, the, the notes from Lexipol, I can download those separately and provide them to you. Um, we've, got a, we've got a very busy um, agenda in the next few weeks. I think one of the questions to think about as you're reviewing is uh, how, much, how much review you want to do. I know Dave's getting ready to, to pull together the stakeholders group. Um, uh, if you want, we, we would need to plan out timing if you wanted to have changes in the in the text before the chapters go on to the stakeholders group. I'm, I'm open to whatever, um, sorry. Ah. I would say have a look first and then let's reconvene and, and talk about what you've what you've seen in the chapters and and how you feel about workload. I'm conscious of not um, overloading while we're trying to get through code update. Um, <clears throat> was there a deadline by when uh, you, you identified some numbers? Um, it sounds as if there are 60 chapters out there now. We have reviewed, we have reviewed 60, 11 of them we don't believe apply. Um, so they don't necessarily need review by this board or any other, uh, the, the term is unpublishing them because they don't apply. Um, so we don't have to review those. I would say if when when you Dave, what are you thinking about for starting the community stakeholders group? I think you said the deadline. You want to make the deadline for applications the twenty fifth of June. Uh, yeah, I didn't have any specific date in mind. Let's see what okay. response is. That was just in the draft um, for letter, letters of interest. So if you wanted that, if you wanted that stakeholders group to start looking at policies um, once it gets rolling into July, I would say let's aim to have let's aim to have comments on 10 of them. If you'd like, I can um, I put them all up so you could see them all and have sort of poke around and get a feel for it. But if you'd like me to to prioritize, I can do that. Uh, yeah, just doing my math, um, it sounds like there are 49 that are applicable. So rather than uh, the five of us go through 49 chapters helter skelter, if you could identify the ones that you think are the primary chapters that would focus our energies on just 10, which is so, better than 49. Oh yeah, sure. I wasn't imagining that we that we would go through them all at once. I just wanted to give you a chance to familiarize because no one else has seen has seen actually the, the content of, of the chapter. I put them up as sort of a first sort of get to know the project. Um, I'd be happy to. We, Larry and I have a work have a, a priority work plan that we're working from. Um, so I can I can break it into folders um, with with the following that priority list. I can I'll, I'll leave all of the chapters up so they're there if you want to go in and out, but I'll break it into a, a prioritized first ten. And maybe Larry, when we after we meet with Lexapol on Monday, oh actually we have the Haldane Safety Committee at three fifteen. So maybe we can get together a little before um, the Lexapol session and and pull out the top ten. Sure. Okay. We'll work a bit. We'll take from that first priority chunk. Okay, relative to the $300,000 that was identified, as you pointed out, um, the $300,000 uh, comes out to be the amount of money that the village pays to the um, our insurance carrier, our health insurance carrier. It does not take into account the amount of money that is reimbursed by the employees and the retirees to the village. It's also not clear to me, uh, and, and that number, the 300,000 is for full-time employees, retirees, and surviving spouses of retirees. Uh, so there's, there's a number that comes off of that. What's not clear to me relative to the Health Act is how retirees will be, uh, retiree contributions, sorry, retiree 
as I understand the law, the proposed new law, 80% of the costs of healthcare will be borne through, um, through uh, taxation, personal, uh, a personal taxation. Sorry, right. taxation based, based, based upon a person's AGI. Uh, it's, it's not clear how in the legislation a, a village or, or who is the taxing agent. Is it New York State that's a taxing agent? Yeah, that, that was not clear to me from the presentation and I haven't spent a lot of time um, yet studying with New York, the New York Health Act. So I don't have the answer to that, but I would say that the assembly member's office, I can't, can't pull his name right now out of my brain, Dick, um, uh, was it Godfrey? Office, Godfrey. Godfrey yes, Godfrey, thank you. Um, was very willing to talk with individual municipalities and provide information. It seems it seems worth being in touch to understand more. Although at this point, it's not going to make it through the. It's not going to make it through this assembly session, no. or sorry, this Senate no. session. It's right. which it rolls into another, which rolls into another year. There's there's no urgency on it. Right. Um, that was my point. Yeah, no urgency. Just something to be hopeful about if it does go through. I'm sorry. The other thing I didn't understand, and you, you probably don't either, is how the um, how the taxation on the employees. Sorry, how so? Eighty percent must be paid for from income tax (AGI) on the participants. Twenty percent must be paid for by the participants themselves. Uh, so what what's happening is the onus is coming off of the village and being uh, put onto the the employees full-time employees retirees and surviving spouses of of retirees and they would end up with health plan that is different than what they currently have which which may not be as robust as their current health plan can i, don't know can I just direct? jump in yeah friend, yes um, sorry, yeah, from what I listened to the um, to the presentation, um, from what I understood, and I could be wrong with it, is that the employers are responsible to pay 80% of the tax for this met, for this benefit. Um, so somehow or other, um, you, we're not going to pay for medical insurance as we know it now, but we're going to pay for 80% of what the employees are responsible to pay. So however, however, that much comes up to because there's no numbers out there yet. Um, right. So, right. uh, so we we may not pay three hundred thousand dollars, but we may end up paying a hundred or two hundred thousand, depending on what our employees' um, responsibility is. And as Marie said, we don't know how we're going to be able to get that number from the retirees. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so or, as we or, say, it's, or even from em employees, right? It's the AGI, not their salaries. Right. It's the AGI. So yeah. It's 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 a larger number than so just yeah, I mean, salaries. So yeah. so the, the advantage comes from the person that not being a healthcare expert, I can't yeah. specifically answer your questions, Marie, but the, um, you know, the, the, the price optimization seems to come in the single payer. And it, it seems also that the appeal is being able to more consistently offer optical dental health across the board. But you're right, the, retire the, retirement, the retirement element is not clear to me either. The retirees element. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a conversation about something not going to happen, apparently. But yeah, sorry about that. Be ready when it does. Someone will. Um, anything, uh, Fran? No, I don't have anything, Dave. Thank you. Uh, Marie? Nothing. Okay. Um, I do have, there is this, the ad for the stakeholders group. I had Jeff put that in this week. Jeff, I have to get you the uh, description to put on our website of duties. Um, which I should have done already. Uh, Fran, you said you had you were going to make changes to the. Uh, I, I, I sent you a, a, an updated version with the correct links, but I will send oh, okay. it to you again. Oh, um, I guess I took. And, 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 Dave, and Dave, there was the acronym in there that needs to be spelled out. There is a reference to CSG, and, and that should be spelled out to the community stakeholders group. Yeah. And I had a, I sent um, back. 
a couple suggestions, very minor via word um, back to you. And I added all the links as well. So they're collected in one place. The, the, one, the one thing that stuck out to me just as a question was we, we had originally talked about um, biweekly meetings uh, and we're leaving that at the discretion of the of the chapter, but I'm sorry, of the of the committee, but it seems like that element the way the way it's written right now, it's, it sounds as if there are more constant meetings than there will be. I, I wrote it out. I wrote out an um, an alternative in what I sent back to you. Thank you for doing it. That's all I have for now. Um, next, we go to discussion of marijuana regulation, the Taxation Act. Um, Fran wasn't here last meeting, asked the table, that wasn't done. Um, and now we have a request from Phillipstown for a joint workshop, which will be July 14th at the earliest, unless they change that, which puts us into a crunch. So um, I'd like to go around with the board and uh, get your feelings on this. Uh, Tweeps, if you could start us off, where, where you are with the regulations and, and whether you would like to whether you'd like to see this go to a permissive referendum or not, or, or how, you, how would you like to work with this? Yeah. Um, well, first to the issue of meeting, um, I, think, I think that's a great idea um, to, do, to do a workshop with Phillipstown. I, I think hearing how other uh, folks are looking at this would be helpful for us. Um, and obviously, you know, our communities are inextricable at this point. So, you know, what happens, what happens for one will have effects for us. So I think we should definitely have a conversation there. Um, as far as the actual technical process of moving forward, again, I think we should have uh, some conversation with the community. I think the community should be able to um, look at the uh, elements of the proposed, not the proposed legislation, but the legislation, um, we should have conversation about what what we think is, but that's going to mean for us here, um, uh, in order to understand better how we should move forward. So I would be open and um, and interested in in having some sort of community input on on the legislation. Any personal uh, feelings on whether to have or not to have? Hmm. You know, uh, I don't yet have a sense of, of where I stand on it, to be perfectly honest. Um, I think that there's a positive potential, um, but I think that um, it's something that would need to be, you know, perhaps uh, regulated even more in ways that represent our community um, past what's already in the in the legislation but um, I am not yet ready to say one way or the other how I feel I'd like to hear what other people feel about it first and as far as a referendum you have no feelings on that either whether we should have one or not I don't know enough about the process other than the legalese of what I saw um, the purpose of it was. Uh, no, not at this time. Okay, thank you. Kathleen? Um, so you're asking first about the, the town board and then you're asking about the, ref, the broader refer referendum question? Uh, yeah, I guess the town board, whether that should be so, or, and then also um, your feelings on the referendum and uh, Okay, so the two dates that the town sent, the one is just days before a deadline, if we were needing to send anything in to the Board of Elections regarding a referendum, so it would have to be the 14th, right? The Actually, let me jump in. I spoke to Tara late this <laughs> afternoon, and she spoke with Richard, so the, tw uh, the 28th is off the table, as they recognize the that it's, it's too late. Yeah, okay. Um, Okay, and as to the referendum, um, I agree that I would like 
to hear from the public. Um, I think that providing the informa information that we can on the village website and then um, having a listening session or two would be a good thing. I am inclined um, myself to, um, to let the public decide by a referendum, to let the voters decide by a referendum. Okay. Fran? Unmute first. Um, okay. Um, while I appreciate Phillips Town reaching out to us, um, and I appreciate them wanting to meet with us and with Nelsonville, um, I think the bulk of anything that's going to happen in this regard is going to happen within this village. And so I think we, we need to get our heads around this. Um, and I understand what both Tweeps and Kathleen are saying about listening to what the, what the residents have to say. However, isn't that what a referendum is all about? So if we decide to put something on the ballot, the residents, all of them, other than 20 or 30 people who are going to come to a meeting or, or a Zoom or whatever, all of them have a chance to, to say what they want to say. Um, so, you know, I'm for getting a referendum on. I'm not necessarily for having a listening session because I believe that that's what the referendum is going to do. So from what I understand, if we do nothing, we're stuck with, with the law the way the governor has written it and we have no option to change. If we do a referendum, it can go two ways. If the, if the residents of the village vote that they want to stay with the governor and legalize everything that's going on, uh, then we're done. If they say no and we want to uh, make it illegal to, uh, to sell anything in the village or to have like a, a, a room where people can gather and, and enjoy marijuana, uh, if they say no, then that can be changed at any time. So six months down the line, they can change it again or next year they can change it again. Um, so I'm just for, let's get the referendum on the ballot um, without having to spend time, not that I don't love the residences, but we've got a bunch of public hearings coming up. Um, and I think just getting the referendum gives the residents a chance to say what they need to say. Uh, and finally, and I think this has got nothing so much to do with the referendum as it has to do with the law in general. Um, I believe the village has an option to make their own laws regarding um, if you want to have people smoking marijuana in your parks and so on and so forth. And that uh, in general, <coughs> That's got nothing to do with the the referendum, and I would be totally against allowing that. Uh, I think the park should be as free from people smoking marijuana as it is from them drinking alcohol or open bottles or smoking cigarettes. Uh, we like to have our fresh air. Um, so that's my thoughts. Thank you, Marie. Um, I agree with Fran is in terms of a joint meeting with Nelsonville and Phillipstown. I, I believe that the village will be the primary location for any, um, any retail sales or any on-site uh, smoking. So I, I don't see the value in meeting with the town. Relative to uh, Fran's comment about smoking. Fran, I'm a what? smoker. I want to smoke sorry, wherever sorry. I want to smoke. <laughs> um, but I just don't want to smell it. <laughs> OK, I, I'll see what I can do about that. OK. In, in terms of um, personal preference, I think, I think the vill village should permit retail sales. I don't think the village should permit on-site, let me call them smoking, smoking dens or whatever. The other factors that are in the law about gardening and commercial, commercial farms and whatnot, that's not up to us. That's not part of what a referendum would do. Um, but I do think that a referendum would provide the most broad feedback that we could get. So I, although I'm personally in favor of sales, I understand and, and respect the, the, the need for, or the potential for a referendum. Thank you. Um, I, I would I would agree with uh, I think that each uh, municipality needs to uh, needs to address this um, on their own, um, and so I, I also don't see the need to have a meeting a joint meeting. Um, I also think we should have this just I, I believe we should have it uh, on as a, a referendum and have it on the ballot. I think that's the best way to see what people really uh, really would like, and uh, it's the time when people are going to vote. 
um, um, and it'll be a busy a busy uh, election year this year. So I'm sure it'll be, uh, you know, probably most we've seen in a while. And uh, I think, you know, before that, though, if we decide to go that way, um, which it sounds like we if three right now that would like to go that way. I think that we just need to have a, an information uh, blitz. I think people should really know what's in the law and uh, what's being allowed. Um, I think they should understand that it's just not a free for all or it's not like you're walking into the gas station and buying marijuana. Um, these things are highly restricted. Um, and uh, so I, I think that all the information needs to be out there um, for people to see. Um, and how we get it out there um, could be discussed, but I, I think that's the way to go. I think just really as much information that we can get to everyone as soon as we can get it to them on the law and make it as clear as possible. And then I believe we should, we should you know, put it on the ballot and uh, do what's needed as far as that goes. You know, Dave, I have a question for you. Um, it, it, might be a, it might be a question for NICOM. Um, is there, uh, was not clear to me from the document they provided, but I wonder if towns can take a regional approach to, to, zo to zoning where the uses are allowable. So for example, one, you know, designating a part, a part of a town, meaning Phillips town, a part of a town where a dispensary can be um, sort of like a, a prefer a preferred zone where that where the dispensary can be if you can if you can work with multiple municipalities in cooperation I think maybe that's some of what is that what you were trying to well, through through you mayor I, I'm wondering what the town was trying to achieve and asking us to meet I, I don't know what they're that's the first I yeah I the, we just figured it get all you know all municipalities together and, and see what we can come to, to be quite honest we as a town board haven't discussed it at all at this particular point uh we you know briefly discussed here and there and they thought it would be like good idea to get you know everybody involved and see what your thoughts are you know if you don't want to attend that i understand that that's fine if you you know but that's it that's what we're trying to do to, so we can so, all come up together with uh so you know. the way the way the law is written the town cannot enforce a blanket law for all of the town. If there is a village within the town, mm -hmm. the village can dictate what can or cannot occur in the village. Right. The town oh. can dictate what can occur in the town outside of the villages that are within the town. Yep, that, that's correct. Just the way everything else is. Yeah, you're 100% correct on that. I think you just wanted to get everyone's input and see what, you, see what your thoughts are. Again, it was my understanding you could opt out the first year, right, mm -hmm. and do nothing. And then you can come back the next year and do a referendum. But I'm not 100 percent sure about that. That's you know I didn't really read a lot about it. That's why was someone mentioned it to me. I don't know if how true that is. You have one shot sort of, referendum. Yeah, I don't think you could. I think if you want to opt out, you have to have a referendum, or you have to have year, you have yeah. to have something. Uh, Although it would be different for Nelsonville because their election cycle is still in March, right? Their their next opportunity for a referendum would be March rather than November. I don't know, Kathleen, uh, I'm not disagreeing with you, but as I read it, although their, their village election is in March, I think they have to take a position prior to December 31st. So they, right. they, may, right. they may have to be on the general ballot for the, for the first time in November of this year, yeah. if, they, if they want a permissive referendum. Or they may do the petition process. Yeah. Well, right. at any rate, Nelsonville is Nelsonville. Um, yeah. No, I, I agree with the ref. I agree definitely with the referendum. Um, and if we're, if we're, it sounds like th three of us feel like any public discussion prior isn't necessary. Two of us think it would be helpful, but it, a compromise, and I think a good thing that Dave's putting forward is making as much information available on the loss via our website and other channels so that the public has access to the same information we have access to. I, I, I think that actually that would be a reasonable compromise. I mean, as long as people have 
all the information that they need to make the decision. I think that's that's fair. And if having additional conversations at this point is is not um, possible due to the schedule of all the other things that are going on, then you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stand in the way. But I do think I would attend a meeting to hear about other people's. Um, thoughts on the matter and if not then i'm happy to go along with what you think is best i mean we have to decide uh you know i, I think it ultimately i think everyone would probably agree we should go to the public for a referendum so uh informational meetings or whatever um uh, if time allowed could be had also or if not then only information would be on the website or any questions could be answered by either us or through NICOM or our attorneys or someone more as most as familiar with the laws that can be. Dave. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to tell you, I did, I did leave a message with the controller's office today. Um, okay. I am concerned about because the monies are distributed via the county and we already have such a lack of transparency with the county sharing sales tax um, and even providing data on what sales tax is due. I'm concerned that there is um, clear accountability and reporting on this particular tax because it's the one tax, the one local tax that the state requires Putnam to share with us. Um, so I want to make sure that we understand exactly how much that 75% of the 4% is that is we're being that we're being paid what we should be being paid. If we were to go ahead, I, I agree. So at this point, uh, is everyone or I'll, I'll make a motion to um, to add this to the ballot in November, uh, a permissive referendum um, per the or do you want do you want to write up a resolution for this, uh, Jeff, and we'll do this next meeting? Yeah, it might. Yeah, because I, I want to get with John to make sure that. Right. Have it correct. This yeah, is we have to have the, the, the correct wording on there. Yeah. So, uh, all right. We'll do that then. Okay. Uh, all right. So you got. So you don't want to. You don't need to attend the meeting that we're going to have then. Uh, no, we won't. We okay. Won't. All right. That's fine. Could be, we I would have to attend as an individual um, just to listen in. That's that's, 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 cool. that's fine. Yeah. That's 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 fine. It's in a workshop. Anyone can attend. Thanks, Bob. Okay, um, so next uh, we did number 14 already. Uh, next is setting a date public hearing on chapter 126. Marie, do you want to take this one? Yes, so chapter 126 is VNT or vehicles and traffic. It is a fairly lengthy chapter. There, there are two sections that this resolution addresses. The first chapter is the first section of the chapter is 126 dash one which adds a definition of a mobile parking meter application. And the rest of that, um, the change to the chapter is in chapter 126-41. That was written about four, five years ago now when the first municipal parking lot came into existence. That chapter section describes a kiosk. It talks about inserting a credit card into the kiosk. It talks about a kiosk, kiosk generating a, a, a receipt. If we choose to go to a mobile parking meter application, those instructions would have to change. So what you see as 126-41 is changes that section, which has about six statements in it, three of which are unchanged and the other three are modified to talk about a mobile parking application, which would accept credit cards, debit cards, and other forms of payment. Um, it eliminates the reference to the kiosk. Uh, it eliminates a, a, sec, a statement that talks about uh, parking expiration. I forget what the wording is, uh, but so that's the extent of the changes. There are six sentences and it's, it's modifying the six sentences to reflect the mobile parking application. So with that background, I think all of you now have that wording in both 
the, the current chapter 126-41, the proposed change to 126-41 and the red line version of 126-41. So with all of that as background, I make a motion to um, approve resolution number 14-2021, which sets a, time, a date and time for a public hearing on a proposed local law amending sections 120, chapter 126, section one and 12641 of the Code of the Village of Cold Spring. I'll second that. Thank any, you, Frank. Any discussion? Yes. No. So it's a roll call roll vote. Call. No. Hey, Trustee Early? Yes. Trustee Foley? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Woods? Yes. And Mayor Mirandi? Uh, yes. Okay. And so the date is uh, June 20. What is the date again? Uh, for the June 22nd, it says it's 6 30. Oh, sure. Okay. Thought I heard 25. Bottom of, bottom of the first page. Yeah, got it. Okay, uh, next approval of bills. Yes. So I make a motion to approve. Uh, there are two two uh, bill groups that will be uh, mentioned tonight. The first is bills that are for fiscal year 2020-2021. These are the remaining bills that Michelle talked about, which are coming in now, but will be paid out of funds from fiscal year 2021. So with that background, I make a motion to approve batch number 6037 in the amount of 38,000 $465.63. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The, okay. second the second Good batch time. of bills are bills that are due in fiscal year 2021 to 2022. Uh, so I make a motion to approve batch number 6038 in the amount of 12000 $759.22. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Jeff, do you have the second on that? We kind of said at the same time we can take whoever. Okay. I gave you, the, Kathleen did the first one, so I gave you the second one. Great. <laughs> Aye, <Yeah>, nice. <laughs> Uh, finally, we have a uh, trustees workshop meeting minutes from 513 2021. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, um, I think that wraps it up except for public comment. Do we have any public comment? There are no hands raised. Okay. With that, I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, all. Good night, all. Good night, everybody. <laughs>